I've watched that pantomime for a number of years now, and each time I watch it, it touches my heart. Because the things that this pantomime represents is what the Bible tells us. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, John writes these words. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Every one of these sins that these young people had, the little cardboard thing, represents how the lust of our lust pulls us away from God, keeps us away from God. What's lying, cheating, alcohol, drugs, sex, music. All these things can hinder us from being what God wants us to be. It can keep us from ever accepting Christ as our Savior, or it can keep us as Christians from totally giving our lives to Christ so that he can bless us and work in our hearts and work in our lives. In my life, some of these things have affected my family, my brothers and my sister, even in my own life. Because, you see, we're all acceptable, deceptible, whatever you want to call it, to the lust of this world. And we can try our best to break out from the chain. And if you watch the young lady, at first she thought about each one of these sins, and then she embraced them. But she came to the one that she just couldn't embrace, which was suicide. But then as her life fell apart, as she embraced these different things, and sin began to encircle her, suicide was constantly pushing to her, trying to get her to accept suicide. And to end it. We live in a society that's affluent. We live in a society where we can go buy just about anything we want. Put it on credit or buy it with the money. And we turn a flip a switch on. We can see anything that's happening around the world. But we still haven't found the cure for people committing suicide. People becoming addictive to drugs and to alcohol. To pornography. Because we've looked at all these things as social ills. And they're not social ills. They're spiritual ills. They're who we are deep down inside of us. We try programs. We try everything in the world. And people say if you have more, then you'll be more at peace. If that's true, then why is the suicide rate so high among affluent people? Why is alcoholism and drugism so high among affluent people? People magnify our movie stars and these people who sing for us and we buy their CDs and we go to their concerts. Not sometimes understanding that we're supporting their lifestyle of drugs, alcohol, divorce, and broken homes. It goes back to the music. But yet we say if we only had, we could do this and we could do that. Not realizing that having things doesn't answer what's in our heart and our soul. What we're longing for. Peace. Tranquility. As you watch the young lady and as the sin caved in on her and suicide. Continue to try to come and get her to take suicide into her life. The only thing to break the bonds of sin was Jesus Christ. The young man representing her raised, he's always standing, always waiting, always has his hands outstretched. But we have to turn to him. And when we turn around from ourselves, from our way of thinking, and from the world and from the sin of this world, and we look to Christ, then the sins of this world just evaporate. And the chains and the bonds of sin are gone because Jesus Christ has freed us by the shedding of his blood and arising again on the third day from the dead. He did that for us. I realized many years ago as a boy that Jesus came and died upon the cross for Roy Dale Smith. He arose on the third day for Roy Dale Smith because we have a personal Savior. 
Not a God who's just out there, who's not affected by our hurts and by our longings and by our disappointments. The Bible tells us as Christians we can go boldly before the throne of grace and receive the help that we need in the time of our need. That's what this gets all about. It's not about looking to others or things of this world. It's about looking to the one who can bring us peace and tranquility. Who when the world is falling apart, we can still know that God is with us. Because I have lived long enough and I have pastored long enough that I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that this world will fail you. That the things of this world will be gone. But only the things that are God and of God will last forevermore. Those are the only things. And if you're here this morning, you've never received Christ as your Savior. You cannot do it yourself. You can try to be the best person you can possibly be, but it will not be good enough. You have to turn from this world and look to Jesus. And you're here as a Christian and you're struggling. The question you need to ask, have you given it to the Lord? Have you allowed him to take the chains and the bonds of sin that bind you and break those chains once and forever? I find in my life as a pastor and as a person, as Paul says, I must learn to die daily to self and what I want so that Christ can live within me and be what he wants me to be. But we can do that through Christ. For he gives us victory. He gives us hope. He gives us strength. When the storms rage, Jesus is always there. No matter how great the storm, he sets us straight and keeps our lives where it needs to be.